what's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel online www.whatsupinthesky.com Come check out the website. We got articles on there. All sorts of good stuff going on the forum. Might as well sign up while you're there because you can talk in the forum. Once you get, I tell you what, once you get in a forum talking, it's so much easier than talking on 30 different uh, YouTube videos. So if you're looking for information, we got people swapping pictures, all sorts of stuff. And you are tuning in to Space News. Yes, and it's been a while. Been really busy. Just got back from Tampa. And I leave Wednesday to go down to the Florida Keys. I'm going down there for a little vacation. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I might be doing a little blogging or something from down there and uh, maybe putting out some things. There's a lot of pictures I haven't gotten to, but uh, this space news was one that kind of saddened me because uh, Edgar Mitchell, I think about him a lot actually when I'm driving and I listen to uh, what he, you know, I listen to a lot of what he has to say. You know, there's so many YouTube videos out there. Uh, there's good books that have, that have him quoted in it. But Edgar Mitchell, Apollo 14 astronaut who walked on the moon, died at the age 45. And sadly, he died the uh, day before, the 45th anniversary, I do believe it was, of the uh, of his walk on the moon. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and read a little of this to you. Uh, Edgar Mitchell, one of the 12 human beings who walked on the moon, has died. I think he was the 8th. According to his ex-wife, Anita Mitchell, Mitchell was 85. On behalf of the, this is NASA, on behalf of the entire NASA family, I would like to express my condolences to the family and friends of NASA astronaut Edgar Mitchell. That's with Charles Bolden. He is the administrator. For NASA, if you don't know that, he believed in exploration. Having been drawn to NASA by President Kennedy's call to send humans to the moon, he is one of the pioneers in space exploration whose shoulders we now stand. And that he absolutely was. Um, and he was a great, uh, just an absolute great man. He really pushed for disclosure and he, and he talked. He was not scared to talk about UFOs, uh, aliens. Uh, what he thought it was, and he was in one of those positions that he could actually know, he, you know, people could open up to him. If you're an uh, army chief or if you're somebody dying, you, you want to get this stuff off your chest. What better than to open up to, to one of the, uh, you know, astronauts who walked on the moon? So as Mitchell died Thursday in West Palm Beach, according to NASA, his death occurred on the eve of his 45th anniversary of his lunar landing, which took place on February 5th. 1971 um, I found in one of my uncle's uh, one of my uncles uh, he worked for for various agencies um, and NASA was one of them that he did work for and I found some of the flight plans and stuff that I have they're up there and pretty neat kind of the, the stuff I found it's not stuff you find just out on the web and uh, it, it, it's pretty amazing the actual efforts that went in to put these guys out there. And these guys were test pilots. They were, they just had what we don't really have that, that non political, there was nothing politically correct back then. If death was just something that could happen. So Mitchell, Alan Shepard and Stuart Rosa who were the first crew of the Apollo or the crew of the Apollo 14th, which launched on January 31st, 1971, Mitchell became the sixth man to walk on the lunar surface. I thought I th think I might have said eighth, so it's six. Sorry about that, guys. Um, they went out there twice, it looks like, to uh, to collect some rocks, hitting some golf balls. He also took the famous photograph of Shepard standing next to the American flag. All told, he spent 33 hours on the moon. All right, here we go. Looking, okay, here we go. Mitchell, who was a lunar module pilot, found the trip to be a profound experience. Looking at Earth from space and seeing it was a planet in isolation, that was an experience of ecstasy. Realizing that every molecule in our bodies is a system of matter created by the stars hanging in space. This is what he told the Telegraph in 2014. The experience I had was called um, Samadai in an ancient Sanskrit, a feeling of overwhelming joy in seeing the earth from that perspective. Fascinated and frustrated between the relationship between religion and science, he was very public about seeing links between the known and unknown. He said he had conducted ESP experiments on the mission. He was also a believer in extraterrestrial activity and 
activity and was convinced UFOs had visited Earth. Um, see, this is where I really commend the man because he actually stood up and was one of these people who, you know, would would say we needed to close this stuff. Um, most people have done the research have found that something came to, you know, has been either coming here for, you know, a lot longer than we believe. Um, maybe we don't own the planet <laughs> as we, as we once, as we feel we do sometimes, um, you know, and he, and he wasn't scared to ask the questions. So in one interview, he told Bloomberg Business that the 1947 Roswell incident, which was some people is evidence of extraterrestrial crash landing was covered up. The U.S. government has said the incident involved the crash was a high altitude balloon. It's you know, and we know that's that most of that is just uh, um, you know for the press after they let the let the cat out of the bag. It's not just military. It's a cabal of organizations, primarily for a proto motive or profit motive and this is where he really sticks himself out there because he's basically saying this just isn't the government i mean this is stuff that's been um, held from us so oil companies can make profit so various places so it's amazing the money and you can tell now uh, because there's the one percent up there and I'm, I'm talking that it really is the 1%, not even 1% up there, it's so sm so much smaller, have all the money, and everybody else has been. The middle class is slowly um, going away here in America. I don't know about where you live. I know I've got a, uh, a worldwide audience to watch these videos. But, you know, even people that I know who own companies are struggling to get by. Companies that may do well, you know, be, be it, it's just, uh, and if you think if they're, were these people that maybe found, uh, let's just say, uh, extraterrestrial uh, technology and were able to back engineer it, you know, let's just say that was a possibility. It would have made a good reason why we just exploded in technology in the last 60 years. Um, honestly, we were, we were, if, well, if you look at human evolution here it was slow 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 and then all of a sudden just takes off but we took we got it to where we were by ourselves so however he drew the line when it came to an interview with the uk mirror news claimed he said ufls have helped prevent nuclear war none of those statements were originated by me he told huffington post mitchell also created the institute of neoatic sciences to research paranormal phenomena and consciousness, in addition, he was a co-founder of the Association of Space Explorers, an organization for space travelers. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and we're going to keep most of this is going to be about him. Uh, let's just go look at his Wikipedia page. And uh, this is what I'm talking about. This is what these guys have. Like, well, we don't have balls anymore. We, everybody's so politically correct, it's sick. These guys used to fly, let's see, he was an American naval officer, an aviator, a test pilot, an uh, aeronautical engineer, and an astro astronaut. Somebody, see, I, somebody put on one of my pages or something, and this was, I, I just unfriended him because I, I can't, this is one of the things, uh, I don't believe that the, that the lunar landings were faked. I don't. I've seen the evidence. I, we've got... Um, family in the past that worked on it that we've got a lot of people who who really worked hard for this and and honestly they got there by the seat of their pants i mean this wasn't technology it's, we think is oh well, we got all this technology they couldn't do it then basically they did it the way we're still doing things we're we're strapping ourselves on top of of you know gas and and fuel and just lighting the candle it just so happens they were able to get through. So he was a naval officer, an aviator, a test pilot. And the, the picture was a couple of the guys going before, you know, the night before. And it said, um, do these guys look like they might lose their lives tomorrow? Like the, most of their lives, the nights before they went out the next morning, they might have lost their lives. They were test pilots. They were, you know, they were aviators. They were, they were in wars. So... Um, it just, it just, sometimes it, it upsets me. And like I said, I'm one of the most 
open-minded people and and believe me sometimes i think i know everything when it comes to something and i don't never put that across i always keep my mind open so like i said there's still that 5.5 percent chance that i might be wrong about that but um just from what I know, just from the, the family member, just being on the NASA coast here, um, over here near Wallops, where a lot of my friends I met in the last 10 years of living down here, their family works for there. It works for NASA. So uh, here's all the information about him. Talks about his college. So he, won, he wasn't dumb. He could really fly. He was a... a See, he completing the officer candidate school, Newport, Rhode Island's commission and ensign. He completed flight trainings, Hutchinson in Kansas. Uh, designate, he was designated naval aviator and subsequently assigned to the patrol squadron 29 BP flying land based patrol planes deployed to Aquanawa. So we'll, we'll, we'll skip down to the good stuff here. Here we go. I love the remote healing stuff he had done. So, Mitchell claimed the teenager remote healer in Vancouver, used a, by the pseudonym Adam Dream Healer, helped him heal kidney cancer from a distance. Mitchell said while he had never had a biopsy, I had a sonogram and the MRI was consistent with renal carcinoma. I guess that's uh, cancer. Adam worked distantly on Mitchell from December 2003 until June 2004 when the irregularity was gone, and we haven't seen it since. So I guess that happened to him personally, and I'm not one to say it didn't happen or it did. Mitchell, here's cool, views on UFOs. Mitchell publicly expressed his opinions that he was 90% sure that many of the thousands of UFO sightings recorded in the 1940s belonged to visitors from other planets. Dateline NBC conducted an interview with Mitchell on April 19, 1996, during which he discussed meeting with officials from three countries who claimed to have had personal encounters with ETs. He offered his opinion that the evidence for such alien contact was very strong and classified by governments who were covering up the visitations and, exist and existence of the alien being bodies in places such as Roswell, New Mexico. His further claim that the UFOs have provided sonic engineering secrets that were helpful to the United States government, Mitchell's book, The Way of the Explorer, discusses his journey into mysticism and space. Um, in St. Petersburg time, this was in 2004, he talked about a cabal, a cabal of insiders in the U.S. government who were studying recovered alien bodies, and the group had stopped briefing the presidents after JFK. We all know that UFOs are real. Now in question is where they come from. Um, and that is just one thing that, that he was very adamant about. Um, he would had you know he was breaking the other guys like if you sergeant robert dean I, I listened to one of his i haven't really done much research on him but i listened to one of his uh his speeches he gave i guess before he passed away if he's still alive if he's gone he talked about the same type of stuff he was either a great bullshitter or he was basically telling the truth so Here's some more. He, Mitchell claimed the Roswell crash was real and aliens have con contacted humans several times, but the governments have hidden the truth for 60 years. I happen to have, here's what he said, I happen to have been privileged enough to be in on the fact that we've been visited on this planet and the UFO phenomenon is real. In a reply, a spokesman for NASA said NASA does not track UFOs. NASA is not involved in any sort of cover-up about alien life on this planet or anywhere in the universe. Dr. Mitchell is a great American, but we do not share his opinions on this issue. Well, of course they don't. You know, what, what are they going to come out and say, oh, yeah, the... Sometimes I even really think about it. There's a lot of us who are watching. If you're watching my videos, you're probably ready to... to take on the possibility that there's E.T. out there, that there's uh, uh, life smarter than us, maybe, uh, e you know, very mundane life. You know, we, everywhere we look on Earth is life, so why wouldn't it be everywhere else? So, um, But the rest of the country, the rest of the world, they might not be ready for that. There's so much religion-based stuff. There's so much uh, that would just tear that down um, in many ways. So... 
I understand why the government keeps some of this stuff from us. And I think what we do with the Mars stuff is, is the first step. There was a civilization on Mars. There was that. And then it's going to go ahead. I don't think we're going to get this closure for 10, 15, 20 years. I'll, I'll be lucky. I'm 35. I'll be lucky if I get it when I'm alive. Full disclosure about what's been going on. And uh, one of those reasons is is because some of the aliens look just like us. They could be standing next to you. And that I've read that on five or six, seven different places. So, And that's probably very... Uh, Without me giving out, you know, places I read it, uh, Robert Dean was one. So that, you know, it's probably very, uh, very, what was I, what should I say, um, not a good idea to give that information out. Because that's what I think it would scare, that's why they're holding back. Because it's not necessarily alien, it means that our whole system that they've told us is a lie. So, all right, here we go. Mitchell, this is on Fox News. Mitchell clarified this comments did not involve NASA, but quoted unnamed sources since the cease. See, that's what I'm saying. People would go to this man. I believe because people, if I was dying, who would I trust more than somebody who walked on the moon? So, in 2015, Mitchell made what Huffington Post UK characterized the astonishment claim that it was aliens, not diplomacy, which prevented the Cold War from descending into the Third World War. He said White Sands was testing ground for atomic weapons, and that's where the extraterrestrials were interested in. They wanted to know about our military capabilities. My own experience talking to people has made it clear that the ETs have been attempting to keep us from going to war and to help create peace on Earth. And honestly, just one more thing, and we'll get off the aliens. I don't talk about the aliens much. If they've been around so long, I don't think they're malevolent. Uh, they're not here to hurt us. They could have done that a long time ago. So that means they're either here to help us, um, join us in some way, or possibly change us, which some people may put into benevolent, but I uh, that's just what I've heard out there. And when I see somebody like Edgar Mitchell, who, who talks about stuff like this, and he was very careful when he when he took his words, he would never use the words I just used in uh, in it. But let's keep going on. There's some still some cool news here. Um, this I thought was neat. We're going to Gizmodo. So rest in peace, Edgar Mitchell. You were a great American. And it, like I said, the people who really pissed me off on Facebook, this would just, you know, a lot of Americans think these guys are heroes. And they are heroes because they flew by the seat of their pants back before a time where we thought, you know, oh, well, this radiation belt, that radiation belt. They didn't care about the radiation belt. <laughs> they, they didn't know about it, didn't care about it. They had a mission to do. They would have died doing it. They would have been proud to have died doing it. So here we go. NASA's new laser-based modem could revolutionize data crunching. So this I thought was pretty cool. For years now, fiber optics has been synonymous with super speed communications and data transfers. But now NASA is working to develop the next generation of high-speed modems using emergent technology called integrated photonics. This agency's first integrated photonics modem is set to be deployed aboard the International Space Station in 2020. The palm-sized device makes use of optics-based functions like lasers, switches, and wires that are all integrated in a microchip, much like those in our cell phones. Integrated photonics are like an integrated circuit, except they use light rather than electrons to perform a wide variety of optical functions. This was from Don, Conwell, Don Cornwell, the NASA Director of Advanced Communications and Navigation Design Division. This technology will enable all types of NASA missions, not just optical communications. Cornwell says that NASA has relied on radio frequency-based communications since its inception, but today's missions demand higher data rates. I mean, yeah, we were sending these really uh, real slow pictures back down. It would take a while for them to come in. I mean, even now, we uh, have a, the deep space network out there where uh, there's different satellites in space. So I have a friend that works on these, and uh, you know, they pass the data along, some from the rovers, some from different various uh, spacecraft out there. So Cornwell says, and that's okay, blah, 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 we already said that. Similar laser transmissions were tested from one of the NASA lunar orbiters a few years ago. The agency hopes the new laser-based system will lead to data encoding and transmission rates 
10 to the hundredth times faster than Curtis than the current status quo. Now that is awesome, and that's going to be using lasers. So just think about that 10 to 100 times faster. They'd have no reason not to get us our pictures like just like that. So, all right, let's keep going. One thing I don't like about NASA, and I, this is why I do believe there's probably a secret space program out there that we don't know about, is because um, the people in charge, you know, the military industrial complex, the people will actually, um, you know, brief the president on this stuff when he comes in on what he needs to know. The president is not and not need to know everything. Um, Look at that. They've got ads so good here. The moon or Mars. Every time we have changes in administrations, NASA's goals change. So here we go. We have experts telling NASA can't afford to put humans on Mars while also pursuing missions to put astronauts back on the moon, according to a panel of experts who testified to the United States House of Representatives. Today, the future of NASA's human spaceflight program is far from clear, said Tom Young, former director of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. There has been continual debate about should we go to the moon or Mars or both. It's clear again we cannot do both. And they're needing to focus our attention, capability, and resources on one option. Okay, NASA's been advertising its Journey to Mars campaign with NASA Administrator Charles Bolton saying that humans could get to the Red Planet as early as the 2030s. But in addition to technological and fiscal hurdles, just every four years we have different people in office, there are panelists agree, which is a good thing. I'm not saying that's not a good thing. But uh, none of these proposal human spaceflight goals would come to fruition. So nothing's ever going to get done um, through NASA. The, right now, there are people that tell me that we have bases on the moon. We, as in humans. But I've also had people to tell me that we can't have bases there because there's extraterrestrial bases there. Myself, I've seen what looks like um, uh, ruins on Mars and the moon. So I think we'd, if it was me, I'd say let's go to Mars. And uh, maybe we need the moon as a base of of you know, maybe as a, a steady base to start there and then go out. I'm not sure. I, I want to get to Mars, but uh, we've got a lot of smart people doing it in the private sector trying to get there. So here we go. This is from Smithsonian.com as we their ad pulls up. <laughs> Isn't it funny? I don't do this to you guys. I just put some little ads on the side of my website. These pop-up ads are just horrible. Basically, a picture snapped by Spirit near home plate shows silica formations poking out of the soil, which may have been formed by microbial life. So the hunt for sign of life on Mars has been on for decades, and so far scientists have found only barren dirt and rocks. Oh, ah, I should just leave right now. <laughs> now a pair of astronomers think the strangely shaped minerals inside a Martian crater could be the clue everyone's been waiting for. In 2008, announced the Spirit rover and discovered deposits of mineral called opium silica inside Mars Gustav's crater. That on its own is not as noteworthy as the silica's shape. The outer layers are covered in tiny nodules that look like heads of cauliflower sprouting from the red dirt. No one knows for sure how those shapes... Um, what does this say? Affectionately called micro digitate silica protrusions. Form <laughs> of, we give name stuff. But based on recent discoveries in the Chilean desert, um, they think the silica might have been sculpted by microbes. At a meeting in the American Geophysical Union in December, they made the case that these weird minerals might be our best targets for identifying evidence of past life on Mars. Well, as of right now, that spirit rover has died. So we cannot go back. So we're a little late on that. Uh, the Orion spacecraft, this is supposedly the one that they've been working on. Uh, I, uh, I haven't been too impressed with looking at it, but it, now it's down at, uh, down at the Kennedy Space Center. After a flight by Super Guppy from the McCoy Assembly Facility New Orleans, according to the primary contractor, Lockheed Martin, the 2,700-pound spacecraft will soon be secured in a structural assembly tool called the birdcage. I guess this is the birdcage around it. 
where it will undergo testing and assembly for its first flight atop the Space Launch System on an unmanned exploration mission, EM-1, scheduled for November 2018. This stuff just doesn't go fast enough for me. It's like, ah, uh, I really do hope we have a, a secret space program out there that, that's way light years beyond this. And this is the last thing we're bringing up. Remember we thought we lost, like, you know, China got to Mars or got to the moon and the Jade Rabbit is like, gave us three pictures and went, Pleh. well, that's not the case. China has released hundreds of high resolution photos taken by its, um, Chang'e 3, I think is how I'm going to say it, lunar lander for the rover showing the moon's surface in vivid detail. The China National Space Administration made the images, video clips, and scientific data available on its website in a rare show of openness for the country's usual secret of space program. China sent its first unmanned probe, the U-2, or the Jade Rabbit, which we covered extensively because there were some pretty cool things there. All right, and the third nation after the U.S. and Russia land on the moon's surface. Despite a shaky start to the mission, the Jade Rabbit is still working and sending images of data back to Earth. Now, that's what we didn't hear. We thought that it was uh, pretty much bombed out. The images show the moon's crust in true color. Uh, spectacular detail. The tracks of the Jade Rover are clearly visible in some of the pictures. The full data sets are available to the public and download on the website. And here we go. Basically, you have to create your own account and get into it. In China, basically in Chinese. Well, look who was ever to, who was able to make an account. So we are going to be bringing you some of these pictures. Uh, I was able to make an account. I used as much translation I could. It's hard to translate the page. Um, I got my username and password. I had to go through back and forth emails with them, but I got it. I will be taking these out. Let's take a look at what we have. Because in the distance on one of them looked like a little pyramid shape we had. There was some pretty cool stuff out there. So um, what's up in the sky? 37 has access. So, all right, guys, that's your space news. And like I said, the big thing, Edgar Mitchell, thank you so much for all your all your work you did here. Um, honestly, after you... you most of it was done after he got back from the moon. It was really just pushing. And uh, people have said that they've been followed when they were there on the moon. They saw the uh, you know, ET spacecraft. If that's what they are, if they're even from another, you know, they could be from different dimensions. I mean, there's so much we don't know. And that's what's wonderful about science, you know, and, and learning. And um, when, when, you, when you know everything... I mean, God, life would be boring. If we knew everything and we, you know, we had found the whole secrets of the universe out, imagine how boring that would be. So, all right, guys, much love. This was a long space news. Missed you guys. I'm going to be going to the Keys for a week. I will go ahead and put some videos up, but I have a, uh, I want to give, Chell sent me a cool picture. It's fragments of stuff. It, they're small, but they're, they look like they're fragments of some, very interesting stuff. Uh, I'm going to try and get that out before I roll out on Wednesday. Much love. Take care. Peace.